What are the biggest marketing challenges entrepreneurs face? While I think the concepts below can be applied to all forms of marketing, they're primarily based on our experience growing our business through paid advertising and direct response marketing tactics. However, I'll do my best to make notes on when, how they can be applied to free products and services as well. 1. Audience. One of the more difficult components of developing a marketing and media plan is figuring out a, who your target customer, user is b, where they're, hanging out, i, e, what sites they visit, TV channels they watch, newsletters they read, etc. It's easy to acquire leads and users, but are they really the folks who will ultimately pay you for your product? Or stick around on your website long enough to generate value for the business? Who is your ideal user? That's a question that needs to be thought through and it's likely going to evolve as your business does. It's also easy to advertise where your target, demographic, might be, but that doesn't mean they're ready to see an ad about your product. For instance, at my last business we sold online courses for investors. You would think that we could advertise anywhere an investor might be on the web, capture their attention with a compelling ad and get them to sign up for one of our courses. Wrong. We wasted a lot of money advertising on channels based solely on demographic targeting. What became clear pretty quickly was that if someone wasn't thinking about their portfolio, they weren't likely going to respond to, or better yet, even notice an ad about investing education. So one of our earliest challenges was figuring out where to market in order to get in touch with our target audience at the right time. What we ultimately did was find our top three competitors, see where they were advertising the most, I highly recommend using AdBeat. Com for tracking display ads for competitors, and just bought media there, this became our, copy and adapt, playbook that served us very well in the early days. Not the most scientific thing in the world, but it allowed us to leapfrog into the space without spending a bunch of money on marketing consultants or months tracking ads. We also tested our way into other sites by experimenting with Google AdWords content network ads, because we could see which sites were generating most of our leads, we would then contact those sites directly and work out more aggressive or alternative media buys and partnerships. This is obviously easier to do if you're using paid advertising, which usually means you have a product or service on the back end that you're charging for, but with respect to free services and unpaid advertising, I'd still think about it the same way. Who is my target customer? What state of mind do they need to be in in order to be receptive to giving my product a try? Do I have any competitors? If so, where are they getting most of their traffic? If not, what's the next closest product to mine and how are they getting traffic? Then adjust your media tactics based on your financials e. G. You shouldn't be laying out cash for ads if you don't have a product to sell, but maybe you could do some slick content marketing deal with a larger newsletter in your space. Or maybe you work with your developer to build a widget for complementary websites that adds value back to their business for free. Either way, you need to be thinking about who your customer is, where they hang out, when they'll be most receptive to a message about your product and figure out what you can do to get in front of them. 2. Message. This was another problem we ran into at the beginning of our business. We all came from, traditional, Wall Street backgrounds. We were used to reading 75-plus page research reports and economic articles. So when it came time for us to write our own research report and try to market it, we presented it the same way we would have on Wall Street. Dot. Dot. All sorts of big words and phrases that made us feel super smart, lots of tables and financial equations. We were so proud of it and just waited for the downloads and money to come rolling in. Dot. 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 And waited. Dot. 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 And waited. Dot. 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 And waited. Dot. 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 You get the point. Getting inside of your customer's head and figuring out the messaging that's most likely to resonate with them is no simple feat. Especially when you consider all of the other messages vying for their attention. 
Not only did we have to be good at researching and analyzing investment ideas, we had to become masters at copywriting, designing for and speaking to our target audience. So once again, we took a page from our old copy and adapt playbook and started to create a swipe file. It's an old copywriter term that literally means creating a place where you store ads that you'll ultimately steal from or be inspired by one day of all of our competitors ads and landing pages. We began to tease out patterns in how they were written, the wording they used, even the colors and design elements that went into each ad and page. Suddenly, things started working. Instead of writing to a few thousand people a month, our newsletter started going out to tens of thousands. And once we understood the underlying reasons why our messaging was successful, we began to innovate instead of just copying others. We experimented with different forms of media, video versus straight text, different design tactics, etc. I guess my point is, don't feel bad if you need to borrow from other sources to get your messaging right initially, you'll have plenty of time to innovate on that later once your business is growing. Like Steve Jobs said when he stole this from Picasso, good artists copy, great artists steal, the important thing is to speak to your audience's core desires, pain points and motivations in an authentic and unique way. That's what will get their attention and it's what will ultimately drive them to give your product or service a try. Why should your target customers buy from you? Your strategy will be the answer to this question, but in order to answer it, you have to address the following common problems. A. Lack of funding B. Poor insights Every entrepreneur wishes to achieve success with little, which is fine, until reality shows them that there are no magic bullets for their business challenges. Unfortunately, not many of them listen and spend hours trying to use specific tactics, such as social media or SEO, under the wrong assumption that they are free. Entrepreneurs are not specialists in every area of their business, but tend to be stubborn and insist upon tactics that they want to work, over and over. Whenever they get results, they exaggerate their importance until they realize that they paid too much for too little. It is normal for entrepreneurs to repeat buzzwords, such as, traffic, and, likes, without establishing a connection between them and, sales, customers, or, profits. This is one of the many reasons why so many businesses fail on their first year of operations. Successful entrepreneurs understand their place in the marketplace and develop a long-term vision that seizes better opportunities. I personally believe that people fail to realize the granularity of the term marketing and often confuse it with one or two sub-activities, like branding or promotion etc. There are few others who monotonously use the term marketing for sales, not realizing the basic difference between the two. And, this I'm telling after working with plethora of clients across the globe. The latest fad to be added in the list is, social media marketing, or, inbound marketing, or, integrated digital marketing. However, these are just tip of the iceberg. Real problem arise when people don't understand the basic objective behind any given process approach and join the bandwagon in a hope that it will do wonders for them. And, this shallowness of conceptualization happens due to not having a clear-cut business vision and objective. In the end, everything boils down to just one cauldron, called sales business development. Boeing can't be F-19 and F-19 can't be a helicopter, even though they all fly. Understand your requirement to understand the anatomy of solution S.